Hello there, I'm Mikko from The Body of Christ, and today we're doing another leadership reflection. Today we were watching in this course about active listening. And during this uh, lesson, I made it, made it a point for myself to actually put that into practice. And what I hear to observe and try to put it into practice so I, I can learn it. And I'm not claiming that I have learned it or learned anything yet. But I wanted to share these thoughts as part of this learning process. And I hope this helps you in that same learning process as well. I can certainly see that this skill over here is extremely, extremely important. And in case you didn't watch the previous leadership reflection about questions, I would recommend watching that first. I'll link it here. Because questions are like the shovel that you use to dig the treasure of wisdom from your team and from the people around you. And you would be surprised how much wisdom God has given around you. Like for myself, I was surprised today that I really am surrounded by a couple of probably world's wisest people when it comes to certain aspects of building the kingdom of God. This like incredible where God has, like what kind of people God has given around me. But wisdom is, oh, sorry, questions are the tool for throwing out wisdom. But today's topic, listening, is what transforms that or puts that into practice. So it turns from just receiving information to actually processing, enriching, using that information. So it's like if you use questions, you can get these raw minerals out, which raw material, which contains the gold. But then you want to refine it. Oops. Um, you want to refine it. You want to chisel it. You want to get the best out of it. You want to get that juice out of it. So that's why you use active listening. And one part of active listening is follow-up questions. So... First of all, let's say you draw something out with your question. Let's say you ask, um, what do you think is the best way to build this business forward? Or what kind of customer segment would be most beneficial for this business? Or who, want, who do we want to serve in the kingdom of God? Whatever, you know. And start thinking about it. You get good uh, answers from your team. You get wise counsel. And then one of your team members pr uh, pr promotes an answer that um, you haven't thought about. Sort of like, wow, that's interesting. That's a new idea. So the informer, you, you're willing to listen. And you listen through the story, you take notes, and you try to understand the best of your ability, what you're saying. But now you still feel like they understand something you don't understand. So you try to ask question like, Okay, here you said, said it like this, and I'm getting that you're saying something like this, but what did you really mean with this? Or how does this connect with this idea that here? Or how do you, uh, like, yeah, that sounds really good. Um, we're facing this one issue, though, that there's this challenge coming, like, let's say this financial challenge. In this method that you're proposing, how would this answer this challenge? How would you deal with this challenge, for example? And then they get to expound on their wisdom on how to deal with that challenge, which you wouldn't have otherwise. So you throw out e extra, like additional wisdom and, and more in-depth wisdom that's more easy to be used. And not only do you get more wisdom, but for that other person, it, it shows that, that you're really valuing or you see potential in their idea. And really, I believe most people, what they want in life, if they would get to choose, is to contribute towards something that's important, to live for something that's important, even die for something that's important, greater than them. And getting into that position where somebody sees value in what you're doing and sees how that is contributing towards the bigger vision and shows you that is doing so, can be quite rewarding in itself. Anyway, so follow-up questions are one way to do active listening. Another thing, of course, is like really focusing. And um, 
I jump this thought a little bit, let's take another step here. And I claim that it is very important from which uh, kind of mindset or state of mind, I guess, other way of saying that same thing, you start that listening from. And that is very important, but also quite challenging. At least that's what I noticed during the meeting, that I really had to focus and it used more energy to stay in that state. And what's that state where you want to be? You want to understand, like previously I spoke about this parable about the king building the kingdom and going into war, and he had these uh, wise counselors around him. But what the king has to keep in mind is always, what is the end goal? What does he want for his kingdom? What's the big vision? And always staying in that position. And always, in our case, and in this king's case, because he's a righteous king in this, this situation, staying connected to the Father, staying connected to Jesus. Like, what is the Father's heart in this matter? Staying connected there. Because the Father has often very different priorities than we do when we just go carnally, when we just follow after the flesh. That is, observe carnal physical things and don't observe how things are done in his kingdom instead of this worldly kingdom. But what Father is interested is the people around you. He's interest, interested in their growth. He's interested in their salvation. He's interested in them becoming more valuable and experiencing the life in its fullest. And really building the bigger picture by kind of one person, one relationship at a time. Whereas we often tend to focus on, let's just get the job done, you know. Let's get through this teaching. Let's get through this course. Let's finish this project now. Uh, people are secondary. But that's not how God thinks. So part of being a good leader and being that king is being actively listening to the Holy Spirit and seeing like, hey, the Holy Spirit wants to teach something to this person. The Holy Spirit wants to draw out something from this conversation that we all may be edifying. Or like, but it's, it, he wants to edify, he wants to build, he wants to increase, not just the projects, but us, the people. So it's important to be connected in that way and to operate in that flow. And that's part of the so-called process, like we discussed last time, where God communicates both you, the leader, and the team. And you... This, of course, what we're focusing on here right now is the communication between you and the team, which involves active listening. But this is a very important starting point. And when you start from that position of leadership and from that state that we are here to build the kingdom of God, we have these issues to deal with. I have this wisdom around me. I have this all this potential here. And God wants to do things through me. God wants to touch these people through me and through them. Then you'll be looking for different answers. So, for example, today in our meeting, we've been uh, designing this leadership pipeline process that helps people to train and grow into leaders in the body of Christ and to bring the kingdom of God forward in the marketplace or in practice, practical life outside the four walls of the church buildings. And we are facing this issue that people often come to these studies or these courses to kind of observe, enjoy, but they don't put things into practice often. And we were discussing something along those lines. So I saw potential there. So I, I started asking questions towards that. End. Hey, if you were a leader in this situation and you had this revelation that you just explained, how would you deal with this problem? How would you deal with this issue? And the people get give their perspective and their answer on that. And I would try to find the bigger picture. And also, I would consciously ask questions to link ideas uh, to other ideas that were discussed previously so that I could build the bigger picture. Because I would need to work on the macro level. I would need to work on building the kingdom of God and leading the kingdom of God. And in that business, it doesn't help 
if you have like 10 good ideas separate over here, but you cannot explain how they link together, what's the, like, what's this about, you know? You talk about active listening, but why? What this has to do with our work? We have a job to do, you know? We don't have time for active listening. But if you have connected these ideas and you have a strong network of ideas, check out the teaching about that, by the way, here, um, then you can explain and you can also show like, hey, this is our vision here. We're building the kingdom of God and we're going to face a situation like this on the way. And for that, we need to be equipped for this. And if we continue to just work on the projects and not build the people, then we're just going to fall flat on our face over here. So you show the roads, you show the links, and you show the connections. But of course, for that, you have to acquire the connections and the understanding. So for that, you need questions again. Um, but like I mentioned last time, questions can be used for many purposes. They can be used to manipulate, they can be used to build, they can be used for gaining an advantage, they can be used to sell, for many things, of course. But what kind of questions and what kind of heart do we need to have when we're asking questions when we are building the kingdom of God instead of our own kingdom? How does that affect the question asking or the listening process? What do you think? One thing that comes to my mind is, and unfortunately I cannot practice active listening with you right now. That's like, I would like to demonstrate it, but it's pretty hard with this camera setup. Anyway, uh, one thing that comes to my mind is the fear of God. We're starting from that position of understanding who's, who's who in the kingdom of God. That Jesus is the number one Lord, number one master, and really our only master. And understanding what he has been speaking to us, what's his heart, what kind of commitments has he acquired of us, and then starting from that position and listening and building from that position. But I believe the hard part there is to be present, like in this image here, to be present with your team and in your relationships, both towards God, his kingdom, and towards those people. Because if you're not present to them, um, they will never feel like they've been listened to. And unfortunately, uh, that's an area where I have to work really hard myself to be more present, to make those questions and really work on the heart, first of all, that I would develop more love towards the people I'm surrounded with and not be so damn cold and project oriented. And I, I, I personally am looking at my family and like, I need to work on this uh, listening part here. Because I'm not showing the interest that I'm supposed to show and that God would show. I'm not having God's heart on that matter. So I really need to work on that. And maybe you can find some areas where you need to work or maybe you have some ideas on how to work on that. But let's try to practice that listening in our families first and in our relationships. Anyway, I hope you found this edifying Let's see each other on the next Leadership Reflection.